Hello, this is the voice demo of Mark Valdez. My phone number is 210-712-3823. And I can also be reached by email at markarmandovaldez at gmail.com. I have my own professional recording, mixing, and editing equipment at home, and I am available for any and all voice work. This includes voiceovers for radio and television advertisements, audio storytelling, audiobooks, YouTube videos, event emceeing, and public speaking. It's one of the most powerful tools our species has ever created. It helps doctors fight disease. It can predict global weather patterns. It improves education for children everywhere. And now we unleash it on your taxes. Hello, my name is Watson. Yup, IBM Watson in the hands of h and Block tax professionals. Creating a future where every last deduction and credit is found. A future of more money going back into the pockets of more families. This is the future h and Block is building. H&R Block with Watson. Don't just get your taxes done. Get your taxes won. Discover immersive entertainment in four times the resolution of full HD. Watch, stream, and browse. And enjoy all your favorite shows and movies more lifelike than ever before. Find the LG Ultra HD 4K TV at Best Buy. Filling your closet with all the latest fashions just got easier. Get new clothes that fit your personal style delivered to your door every month. So let your friends think you hired a personal stylist. We won't tell. 54club.com Experience timeless style from the inside out. Command the road in the all-new, boldly innovative A6. Visit your Audi dealer for special offers. This is an audiobook excerpt from Brian King's nonfiction horror novel, The Rising. The dead scrambled for an entrance to his grave. His wife was among them, as ravenous for Jim in death as she had been in life. Their faint, soulless cries drifted down through ten feet of soil and rock. The kerosene lamp cast flickering shadows on the cinder block walls, and the air in the shelter was stale and earthy. His grip on the Ruger tightened. Above him, Carrie shrieked and clawed at the earth. She'd been dead for a week. Jim sighed, breathing in the dank air. He lifted the metal coffee pot from where it sat on the heater and poured himself a cup. The warmth felt good, and he lingered there for a moment before regretfully turning the heater off. To conserve fuel, he only ran it to heat up his meals. The brief comfort only made the damp chill stronger. He sipped instant coffee and gagged. Like everything else, it was bitter. He crossed back to the cot and collapsed upon it. The noises continued from above. Jim had built the shelter in the summer of 1999, when Y2K fever was at its highest. Carrie laughed at him until he'd shown her some of the reports and articles. Even then, she'd been skeptical, until the nightly news' constant barrage had made her a believer. Two months and $10,000 later, the shelter was completed using most of Carrie's savings and all of his construction knowledge. It was small, a 10 by 15 foot bunker that could hold four people comfortably. Despite the size, it was safe, and more important, secure. Jim equipped it with a generator and a vacuum powered toilet that drained into the septic tank behind the house. He'd stocked it with canned and dried foods, toilet paper, medical supplies, matches, guns, and lots of ammunition. Three pallets of bottled water and a 55-gallon drum of kerosene stood in the corner. There was a battery-operated boombox and a wide assortment of their eclectic musical tastes. Another shelf held their favorite books. He'd even brought down the old Magnavox 486S computer. It wasn't fast, but it was easy on the generator and it still gave them contact with the outside world. 
They'd started out that New Year's Eve day by keeping a close eye on CNN. When the century passed in Australia and the world failed to end, he knew that all the preparation had been for nothing. Country after country greeted the millennium, and the power stayed on. That evening, they attended a party at the home of their friends, Mike and Melissa. When the ball dropped and the drunken revelers counted down, Carrie pulled him close. See, crazy man, nothing to worry about. I love you, crazy woman, he had whispered. I love you too. They were lost in their kiss and barely noticed when Mike turned off the breakers and screamed, Y2K! As a joke. As the months went by, the shelter gathered dust. By the end of the next year, it lay forgotten. After the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 raised the fears of biological or nuclear attack, Jim restocked the shelter. Even then, it was just an afterthought. Until the change began. Until the rising started. In the end, the ghosts of Y2K, September 11th, and other such events had doomed the world. Tired of the unending stream of end-time prophecy and destruction of Western civilization as we know it, disasters of the weak endlessly paraded before them. The world had ignored the early media reports. It was a new century, one that had no room for those medieval fears and extremist paranoid attitudes. It was time to embrace technology and science, time to further the brotherhood of man. Mankind had perfected cloning, mapped the human genome, and even traveled beyond the moon. When the joint Chinese-US mission had finally set foot on Mars, the world scientists proclaimed that the cure for cancer was just around the corner. Y2K didn't destroy civilization. Terrorism didn't defeat it. Society had faced both and conquered them both. Civilization was invincible. Civilization was dead. A muffled scrambling came from overhead as something pulled on the periscope. The portcullis wiggled in its turret, swiveling back and forth. The scratching changed to a frustrated grunt, and the viewpiece shuddered on its axis. It rose, slamming into the ceiling, and dropping back down. Jim closed his eyes and whispered to himself, Hello, Carrie. <laughs>